Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flight Deck. Today we'll have a look at Mobi Flight and the communication with Prosim. First of all, to all of those of you who have watched my last programming video where I made my first connection tests with Prosim, I have good and bad news. You may remember I've written some Arduino code so that I could connect the Arduino via a network and an IOCP server to Prosim. The good news is that I have extended my Arduino code and now can process signals from rotary encoders, can control 7 segment displays and even increase the number of available pins of my Arduino with a port expander. But the bad news is that the whole construction didn't work as reliable as I hoped. It lost the network connection from time to time and sometimes it was frozen completely. And so I had to make a decision. I could invest more time to improve the code, but it wouldn't be sure that I could reach this goal. And you would also have to wait longer for new video content. So I decided to let the programming work rest for a while and have a look at another well-known software in the simulation community, MobiFlight. I made some tests with the software and what can I say? I really quickly got some reliable results. And so I can imagine to use it for the further cockpit project to get me back to business. So let's have a closer look to what MobiFlight is about. First of all, it is a firmware called Program that is flashed to your Arduino Maker and makes it a MobiFlight module. It tells the Arduino what kind of in or output devices are connected to it and on which pins. So keep in mind that you will have to flash the Arduino again whenever you connect new devices to it or change something concerning the wiring. As supported input devices, there are switches and encoders. The output can be sent to LEDs, 7 segment displays, servo and stepper motors and displays. Everything else is controlled by another program, the MobiFlight connector. It establishes the connection to your MobiFlight modules and sends and receives values from your simulator via the FSUIPC offsets. FSUIPC is a small program from Peter Dawson that you can download from shirati.com. It provides third-party developers with information from inside the simulator via a bunch of offsets, which are hexadecimal addresses that can store some information. With these offsets, you can also send information into the simulator. ProSim can also read and write these offsets, so we have the possibility to communicate with it. To understand what I'm talking about, let's have a look to one of these offsets I will use in this tutorial. The first offset we can use has a number 66C0. To get to the next offsets, you count up to 66C9 and because we are in a hexadecimal system, there are 6 more offsets to come which are called 66CA to 66CF. And then a new row starts with 66D0 and so on. There is a wide range of offsets available but most of them are already reserved for other informations. But there is a small range that we can use for our own informations and these are 66C0 to 66FF. There seem to be some more offsets that can be used, but we will come to this in later episodes. Now every offset is a so-called byte. And maybe some of you know already, a byte consists of 8 bits. And these bits will store our informations. For example, the offset 66C0 can store the state of 8 buttons. So let's prepare the test setup you already know from my last video with a switch and a LED. I connect the LED via a 220 ohm resistor to ground and pin 13 and the switch also to ground and pin 12. You can use any pins you want but don't use pins 0 and 1 as well as the analog pins A0 to A15. First of all we have to make a MobiFlight module out of our Arduino Mega and for this we plug in the Arduino via USB to our PC and start the MobiFlight connector. 
As you can see, I'm using the German version here and I haven't found a way to switch it to an English version until now, but I will explain what is shown here and most of this, uh, I think, you can understand. So when I'm starting the MobiFlight connector with a new Arduino Mega plugged in, it informs me that it can upload the firmware to the Arduino and I say OK. So the upload was a success and now we have our first MobiFlight module connected to our PC. It has already opened the settings page, but if you want to go to this page at any time, then you just go to Extras, Configuration and MobiFlight module. And here you see our connected module. The first thing I want to add is our MCP Auto Throttle LED. And I click on the module and say Add New Device. And it asks me what type of device I want to add here. And I want to add an LED output. I have connected this at pin 13 and I give it the name MCP Auto Throttle. With the symbol here, I can already see that it is an LED. And I will add the next device, which is the switch. I go to switch, which I have connected to pin 12. And I call this MCP Auto Throttle Arm Arm. And if you are asking uh, why I'm using this name here, I'm just uh, naming it like ProSim does. So this makes me easier to find which switch and which output this is in ProSim. When I have added my devices, then I go to Upload. And the upload is finished. Now the MobiFlight module knows what we have connected to it and we will switch over to ProSim to prepare everything there. In ProSim we have to go to the config and configuration page and there to the drivers tab and we have to ensure that the FSUIPC support is enabled here. Then we can go to the combined config tab and to find our switches and LEDs easier, because we uh, want to look at the MCP module today, I will type an MCP and so I will receive a filter and every switch uh, input and output, which is called something like MCP will be shown. And so this makes it easier to find the switches you're looking for and you don't see uh, the EFIS uh, switches, for example. So now we will configure our LED light for the auto throttle, and this we can find in the indicator section. And here at the top, we already have it MCP auto throttle. And we say we will control this via FSUIPC with 8 bit unsigned. And we use our first free bit of the first free offset, which is the 66C0. And the first bit is the 0. Now we will configure the switch for the auto throttle. And this we find here in the switches category. And we search for the MCP auto throttle arm arm switch and here also we say MCP 8 bits unsigned and we choose the next bit which is bit number 1 and say OK. Now when ProSim knows how the informations will be sent and received, we can tell MobiFlight what to do with them. In MobiFlight We'll first configure our LED and for this we're here at the 
in output tab. And with a double click, we can enter a new name for our device. And also we call this MCP Auto Throttle. And we go to this edit button here. We have to enter the corresponding offset, which is 66 C zero. The size is one byte. And uh, because we're using the first byte, we mask out every other byte here so that only the zero byte keeps uh, activated. If you know the code for this, then you can also enter it directly here. We switch to the display tab and have to choose the connected module. And this is easy because we only have one module connected at the time. The use type is a pin. And there is only one pin to choose. And this is already selected here, MCP AT. And I can directly switch the test button. And when I do this, then the LED on my breedboard goes on. Now we need our switch defined as an input. And we change to the inputs tab. And again, double click for a new entry. And we call this MCP auto throttle arm arm and again click the edit button we can switch here again to the input tab and select our mobiflight module and the device we have connected and this is the mcp auto throttle arm switch now mobiflight needs to know what action type we have here it's an FSU IPC offset and here we can enter the offset we have defined in ProSim which is 66 C0 again we have one byte in size and the bit this time is the second one so we deselect everything beside the one bit and in this field, we have to say MobiFlight what it has to do when the switch goes on, because here we are on the on press state, and it should send a one. The same we have to do on the on release tab. We choose the FSUIPC offset. Again, enter the offset byte and choose the same bit but this time we send the value zero and also we have to activate the switch here to ensure that prosim can receive the values i already have installed fsu ipc it will be integrated into your simulator and i need to have prepared running with a loaded flight I just use the ProSim flight model. I press run in MobiFlight and when I now switch on the auto throttle switch, the switch and the corresponding light in ProSim goes on and so does the LED on my breakboard. Now I will add an encoder to control the captain's curse display. The middle pin of the encoder will be connected to ground and the other two pins to pin 10 and 11 of the Arduino. In MobiFlight, I will have to tell the MobiFlight module first about this new device under Extras and Configuration on the MobiFlight module tab. And here I add a new device and this will be an encoder. I have connected it to pin 10 and 11. And the type is two detents per cycle. Here you have to look on the data sheet of your encoder or try out a little bit what type is right for your encoder. I will 
and give a name for it mcp captain curse encoder and upload the firmware to the Arduino. The upload is ready and again we keep on working in Prosim. In Prosim we go again to the config, configuration and combine config tab and there to the throttle MCP category and to encoders. And here we choose the MCP curse one value encoder. And an encoder in Prosim is a 60-bit signed FSU IPC offset. And it also needs two offsets of them. So I will start with a new offset and this will be the 66C1 offset. And because it needs two offsets, the next available offset would be the 66C3 offset. Back in MobiFlight, with a double click, we can enter the new device here on the inputs tab. It's the MCP Captain Curse Encoder. And go to Edit. And here we have to choose again the module and our device. And now we have to go through four of these tabs here. First on left, again we have to choose the FSUIPC offset and enter our offset 66C1. Because it needs two offsets, it has a size of two bytes. We can let the mask value unchanged and our value, what happens when we turn the encoder left, is that it decreases the curse value and so we set minus one. And the other thing on left fast is basically the same thing that we do uh, on the on left tab. But this time we will decrease the value faster and this is 10 times faster. So we set here in the minus 10. And maybe you guess it on right. We do again nearly the same. But this time we will add a 1 to the value and on right fast. will increase the value by 10 and activate this input. After I started MobiFlight again, I can control the curse value with my encoder. So that was not too difficult and it works out well. The last thing I want to test now is a control of some seven segment displays. MobiFlight can control a 7 segment displays with the help of the Max 7219 chip. And to understand what this chip does, we have to know how a segmented display is working. When you are looking into a datasheet of such a display, you will find a graphic like this here. There are 7 segments named from A to G and a decimal point. Every segment is lighted up by a small LED. And to show up a number, you have to get power to the corresponding pins of the display to build this number from different LEDs. This means you will need 9 pins on your Arduino to control all LEDs of the segment, the decimal point and to connect the needed ground pin. And this all for one single number. As you can imagine, for a full cockpit, this would be a huge amount of pins. So to not have to reserve this amount of pins for every display, the displays are sharing the pins. They only need their own voltage or ground connection connected to a transistor. When you are using common anode displays, they share the voltage and common cathode ones share the ground connection. With these transistors, every display can be switched on or off in a short time. 
this happens so fast that your eyes won't see it. And with this technique, called multiplexing, you can see many numbers lighting up at the same time, but you won't realize that only one number is lighted at once. And this is what the Max 7219 chip does for us. It can control up to 8 displays with only 3 pins of the Arduino, and we can even daisy chain them so that 8 chips can be controlled by these 3 pins. You can buy them already assembled with two 4 digit displays on a PCB, but when you do this, look out for those who have the displays on sockets so you can easily disassemble them to place them where you need them. I have already chosen my displays and also have a bunch of those pins and so I will try my first test by wiring them on my own. And to do this, we have to look at the data sheets of the chip and the display. Here you can see all the pins of the chip and what has to be connected to them. First of all, we see that pin 4 and 9 need a connection to ground. Pin 19 will be connected to 5 volts and pin 18 via a 9.53 kilo ohm resistor too. My test displays just went on and immediately off when I was using this resistor. I got them working when I used a 47 kilo ohm resistor. I don't know why, but it worked. Maybe someone of you can tell me why this happened. To control the chip, pins 1, 12 and 13 have to be connected to the Arduino. I will use pin 7 to 9. The segment pins need to be connected to the corresponding segment pin of the display. For example, we take segment pin A, which is pin 14. You look into the datasheet of the display and here you can see segment A is represented by pin 7. So you connect pin 14 of the chip to pin 7 of the display and so on. You don't need to connect the decimal point if you won't use it. These wires can be shared with the two other displays on the same pins. I don't visualize this to let you still be able to see something on the screen. Now every display needs a digit control pin for example, 2, 11 and 6 connected to one of its ground pins. In this case, you can see the ground pins are 3 and 8. Now the wiring is ready for testing and we can make the settings in MobiFlight and ProSim. One thing I have noticed when I experimented with the 7 segment displays was that I ran into troubles when I used own offsets for values that are already known by FSUIPC. My displays were not in sync with those from ProSim from time to time. So it is always a good choice to have a look into the offset document from FSUIPC, which you can find in your prepared folder under Modules and FSUIPC Documents. There you find the FSUIPC offset state. And here we find the offset 0C4E, which is already assigned to NAV1 OBS setting which is exactly what we need. So this time we don't need to make any settings in ProSim. Using these offsets also saves you free offset values that you can use for other things. So this time we can switch directly to MobiFlight. Here we go again to the configuration and to the MobiFlight module tab. And there we add our last device, which is an LED 7 segment. We name it MCP Curse 1 and our DIN is at pin 7, CS is pin 8 and the clock is at pin 9. The number we let on 1, this would be the number of max chips you have connected to these three pins here and we can upload it. On the output tab we can create a new output device. Again the name MCP Curse 1 and go to edit 
And here we can use a preset for the first time when we choose Autopilot Curse OBS 1 and click on Use. Then the following fields are filled automatically. And you can already see in the offset I have talked about before. The size is 2 bytes. And on the display tab we have to choose our module and which type this output is. In this case this is not a pin but display mode. And the address and connector is the, our MCP curse 1 on the first module. And we only use three digits and all will be used. Activate the use left padding. And when we say test, the numbers are already shown on the seven segment displays on our breedbot. When we now hit run in MobiFlight, we can finally control the displays with our encoder and they are already synchronized to Prosim. So this was my first experience with MobiFlight and I have to say even if there are some things that I don't like like the missing support of a port expander or a fully functional routine that synchronizes the used offsets with the state of your hardware switches at startup. I have to say that I finally see me coming back to cockpit work. It is really easy to integrate new switches into your system and I think I will use it for the upcoming steps in the project. I hope you liked this small introduction and if you want to stay informed about upcoming videos don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.